Shalom Uvracha. Thank you so much for being with us on this very special evening. You got to sing a good Breslov Nigan tonight as we rejoice and we bring up the memory of someone who, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated tzaddikim of the last generation, which I'm very much looking forward in delving into his light for a few minutes. So the picture of the person that you saw uh, this evening in tonight's flyer, actually, I just realized it while we were singing, that picture I have in the corner. So on your right, the person on the right is the tzaddik that we're speaking about. And that was Reb Levi Yitzchak Bender. Who was Reb Levi Yitzchak Bender? Even though we're going to learn a very sweet and simple Torah of his. Who was Reb Levi Yitzchak Bender? Um, Reb Levi Yitzchak Bender was someone that we owe a huge, tremendous debt of gratitude to. Mamish, mamish, mamish. Very, like, a very strong one. Um, I just want to make sure something. Shimon. Yes, the very small-minded people in the world that still think <laughs> that they can bother us and prevent us from learning Torah. I, 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 foolish, foolish, foolish self-haters. Hashem Yirachim on you. Anyway, Tfuya. Just got to keep a 
keep an eye on for them. And Bezrat Hashem, they're gone. Okay. You never know. So anyway, um, Reb Levi Yitzchak Bender uh, was born in the same town where the Eish Kodesh was from in Grzysk. He was born in 1897. And Reb Levi Yitzchak Bender was, became, we're going to be learning about his life in Elul. But for now, uh, what Reb Levi Yitzchak Bender, for us to understand, is that he was really the reason that so many of us are privileged to know about Rabbi Nachman today. Because eventually, Rabbi Levi Yitzhak at the age of 17, although he does not grow up in a breast of her home, it's an amazing story how he gets turned on to Rabbi Nachman. In the age of 17, he heads out to Uman. And he's back and forth between Uman and Tulchin, where he married a girl from, comes back to Uman, but he, and he suffered tremendously, tremendously, Till eventually in 1949, he was able to make Aliyah. And he lived there until his death in 1989. So his last 40 years of his life, I believe Yitzchak was in Yerushalayim. This is a Yid who did tikkun chatzot, meaning waking up to cry over the Churban Beis HaMikdash every single night for 75 years. This is a Yid who finished the entire Talmud and Zohar a number of times. He also did his Boedidus every single day, and he dominates every single morning. But when he was asked which of his accomplishments is most precious to him, meaning which are you going to go up to the present before the Beis Din Shalmala, so I believe Yitzchak answered, well, I lived 30 years in Russia, and I still believe in God. What Rebbe Levi Yitzchak went through in Russia, Hashem Yirachim. More on that in Elul. But one of the things that touches me so deeply about Rebbe Levi Yitzchak is his ability. His, he, he, he had a tremendous, tremendous ability to bring down Rebbe Nachman very, very pashut. Rebbe Levi Yitzchak is known for his sichot. And um, there's a five book series, five-volume series called Dibure Emuna, and it's all the sichas of Rebbe Levi Yitzchak Bender, not all, but many, many of them, where he took Rebbe Nachman's Torahs and he brought them down in, a, in the most, um, basically to your doorstep, in such a sweet, simple way. Well, since tonight's his yard site, and he passed away 31 years ago tonight, I want to, uh, I want to also connect this evening's learning with what we usually learn, which is about Geula, because we all know that in the time of the three weeks, really all year long, but specifically in the time of the three weeks, it's always the time where we have the opportunity to really dig deep, to dig so deep in our hearts and souls, and to wipe out any ounce of what may be still some kind of sinas achim, some kind of hatred amongst friends, amongst brothers, amongst people. And we know that that's the gateway towards Geula and towards receiving the Mashiach. So in Rebbe Levi Yitzchak Bender's very unique style, let's see how he will bring us Rebbe Nachman's Ahava Yisrael to the plate. And it'll connect also to a question that we brought up a few weeks ago. How is it, how could it be that Rebbe Nachman spoke so highly of himself? We're going to address that question once again. And we're going to see it from a different angle this evening. So you'll see the text in front of you. And we're going to go to the bottom of the text on the first page. Gam Sinas Yisrael. This is a Sicha of Levi Yitzchak. And I want to go exactly to the heart of something that's very important. If you look at the bottom paragraph. Shem, if you can make it just a tad bigger for all the people that are over the age of 35 and can't see that well. Okay. Thank you. Pagam Sinas Yisrael, but Torah Ktuv, it says in the Torah, Lo tisna et achicha bilvavcha. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Belav ze alul adam la'avor bechol rega verega. And this love, this, this mitzvah that you have to make sure you don't do, of hating your brother in your heart, a person can mamrish be going over this at every given moment. What does he mean? Adam, if a person, God forbid, 
transgresses with eating milk and meat, so he ate it, man, he's done with it. You're, you're done with the Avera once you chugged it down, right? Now, if you, now, what's amazing is that most of us who consider ourselves religious or law-abiding, halachically abiding, or ethically abiding even, which is no stira, but whatever, I'm saying that for a certain reason, we would never, ever, ever dream of having a cheeseburger. Never. But lo tisnat achicha bilvavcha is not like we would never dream of ever, God forbid, hating someone. It's like if you tell someone, you realize that if you hate your brother in your heart, it's worse than eating 5,000 cheeseburgers, for instance, right? Why? Because when you eat a burger, when you eat a cheeseburger, it's in, it's out, it's done. But, but this love of not eating your brother in your heart, any, every given second that in your heart you never have hatred towards another Yid, you're doing the Avera again and again and again. And again, and again. It's not like, oh, I hated him for a few minutes. There's no such thing. When you hate someone, God forbid, it should never happen, but if God forbid it still happens, then Rebbe Yitzchak is saying it happens continuously over and over and over and over again. Other avails that we do which are bad, you do it, you're done. Shalom al Yisrael. Adayin atasoneh, veadayin atasoneh. Yitzchak is pointing out, why is it so kedai? Why is it so worth to abolish anger from the heart? Why? Because when you are hating, it, first of all, it consumes the all of you. You can't really hate someone and then love someone also. But further, what he says is that it's continuous. It doesn't stop. It goes on and on and on and on and on every given second that the hatred is still in the heart. We'll continue to the next page now. Uleumatsot al yedei ahavat Yisrael mekaymim gam lav vegam ase. There are positive commandments and negative commandments in the Torah, right? Do's and don'ts. So when you love a yid, when you love someone, so the positive commandment is love thy neighbor. And at the same time, you're doing another mitzvah. And now you shall, and you're also keeping the commandment of thou shalt not hate his brother in his heart. So you get a double, you know, it's, you get a double portion. You get two mitzvahs for the price of one. I was actually thinking about that this morning. Because in the learning of the Rambam, the Rambam says that the, he brings down a number of mitzvahs regarding Yom Kippur. He says there's a mitzvah to fast, and there's a mitzvah not to eat and not to drink. So I was wondering, what's the difference between the two? Well, there's energy that comes from keeping positive commandments, and there's a different type of energy that comes from keeping the negative commandments. Meaning, I don't mean the negative, I mean the, not, the don'ts, the don't do's. So that's how Rebbe Yitzchak opens up this sicha by speaking about how chaval it is to be sinning with something over and over and over again when you can't get it out of your heart. So now, let's try to figure out how to do the work just a little bit better and just a little bit more in Rebbe Yitzchak's unique, sweet, gentle approach. Rabbeinu Amar, Rabbi Nachman said in Sicha Saran, Rabbi Nachman's Wisdom 91, Rabbi Nachman warned, tremendously warning us, make sure you never speak ill of any other Jew and judge each person favorably. Odamar, Rabbeinu, Rabbi Nachman also said, now this is the statement that I mentioned at the beginning, it's going to be a little bit wacky for some of us, Rabbi Nachman said, "Shehechan shenimtza hirhur tshuva, huba mi menu." 
I never understood this till this evening. And I hope I'm understanding it now. But Rabbi Nachman said, wherever in the world there is a contemplation, there's some kind of, a, oh, I feel like doing tshuva. Or I feel like tshuva is available for me. I feel like there's a gate that's open for me to for tshuva. Rabbi Nachman said, wherever that happens in the world, it's, it's probably coming from him. That Rabbi Nachman opened that gate for that person. Brings us back to that question of how. <laughs> Why would you say such things, Rabbi Nachman? We need you to be that humble, humble tzaddik that doesn't say statements like that. But like we learned a few weeks ago, that when Rabbi Nachman told us about great milas, great levels that he attained, it was mainly for you and I to know that we're capable of attaining such levels if we only try as hard. And if we're only as committed as he was to excel. That's how we understood the concept of Rabbi Nachman sharing with us some very interesting statements of his. So again, what's the very interesting statement Rabbi Nachman says over here? He says, when there's a, when there's a hear who tshuva in the world, when there's a thought of someone doing tshuva in the world, it most probably is due to something that has to do with Rabbi Nachman. Okay, so how, how Rabbi Levitzel is going to help us understand this. And he's also going to give us the tools right now to do the same thing. The explanation is as follows. In the famous teaching, teaching 282 in the Kute Maran, which is basically Breslov 101, the Torah of Azamra, the Torah of the good points, the Torah of judging others favorably. Katav Rabbeinu, shekasheh danim et chavilo lekav When you judge your friend favor- favorably, Rabbi Nachman says, when you, when you judge someone favorably, it's not just something that you're doing to yourself and you, you're acting holy, but you're literally able to elevate a person from a place of debt, mikaf chov, and you, by judging him favorably, lift him up to the place of kav schut, of favor, v'yashuv b'tshuva, the way you look at another person can literally cause them to do tshuva. Now, when we've learned a zamra over the years inside, we always connected to the train of thought that would help us understand the zamra as follows. If you have someone that looks at you with eyes of, wow, I believe that you could shine, you'll probably end up shining. Probably. Because when those eyes look at you and that's what you're looking at, that's contagious. Very contagious. Very contagious. So when you look at someone and judge them favorably, Rabbi Nachman says, you really do elevate that person and enable them to do tshuva. So now let's get a little bit visual. Let's visualize the following. Right now, I'm in Eretz Yisrael. I'm in Efrat. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you for this blessing that never gets old. I'm here. I'm living in Eretz Yisrael, right? And right now, I'm thinking about a Jew that is currently sightseeing in Indonesia. I don't know. You, you, you name it. It doesn't matter. I don't see this person at all. But if I think that this person has no merit... I'm saying to myself, this is what this assimilated Jew is doing during, doing during the three weeks. He's traveling the world, enjoying things. He's traveling in such a treif country like Indonesia. So if that's what I think about that person, Reb Nachman says, it's like I'm locking the gates. I'm preventing that person from going into the gates of tshuva. I'm blocking it from him. Ach, im ani dano to lekav schut, harei ani ma'aleo to leschut. But if I judge that person favorably and I say, wow, bono shalema, look at this. This assimilated Jew who has no idea there's even a concept called the three weeks, but I'm sure that him traveling through nature is because he's seeking you. Because he wants you. Mom is pulling a Rebbe Levi, it's like on him, right? Because he wants you. 
אצל רבי לוי יצחק סלזון, אמרתי, אני מעלה אותו לזכות. At that moment, I take the key for him, I open up the gate of truth and I'm like, walk in. Why? כי באותה שעה שאני חושב טובה על יהודי, יהיה מי שיהיה, because the moment that I'm thinking something good about another Jew, and I know, חבר'ה, this sounds very simple and very much kindergarten, but this is the basics of all basics. And this is what we're going back to during the three weeks. With the same time that I'm thinking something good about another Jew, יהיה מי שיהיה. He'll be, he, he is who he is. הרי אני מסוגל לזכותו בהירי תשובה עד שישוב אל אלוקיו. What I'm able to create for that person is unbelievable. I'm able at that moment to merit that person with deep thoughts of תשובה until that person figures out a way to go walk through the gates that were just opened for him by means of my positive outlook on the person. So now let's go back to Rabbi Nachman. So why did Rabbi Nachman say that whenever anyone has a hero or tshuva, it comes from him? Ve'rabbeinu, shayadan et kol ha'olam lekav z'chut tamid. What did Rabbi Nachman always do? He was judging everyone favorably all the time. That's what he was busy doing all the time, judging everyone favorably. Ki arei gam ala gurgaroa shebagroim, אומר רבינו שיש לו סיכוי ויש לו תקווה. כי רבי נחמן says even about the lowest of the low, that they have a סיכוי, they have a chance, they have hope. נמצא שרבינו מעלה את כולם לקו זכות. Therefore, it's, it's, it's very apparent that רבי נחמן raised everyone to a place of being judged favorably. ולכן התבטא ואמר, therefore he expressed himself and said, שהיכן שיש הרהול תשובה, הוא בא ממנו. That when, when there's a thought, some type of a spark of a thought of a רצון to do תשובה, it came from him because Rabbi Nachman was sending out the Kav Schut messages throughout the whole world. So חבר'ה, right now, you know, it's a very big thing to, to, to love, right? Obviously. But if right now we'd close our eyes And take a person that we have we are convinced is bad and wants our worst, and we can't stand them, and they hurt us, and we have to protect ourselves from them, even if it's all true. Would you rather that person do tshuva or remain a dark, dark person? Obviously, the Yiddish heart is Rahman, is compassionate. And it doesn't want anyone to suffer. So right now, just think of someone, if there's someone in your heart that maybe you can't see them right now, but someone there that has really messed with you. If you can melam et schut on them, it's not just that you're doing a holy thing for yourself and you get a brownie point. but you're opening up the gate for them to walk through those gates. So he continues on the bottom. Ve'omnam. Echad mi'ikar yesodei darko shel Rabbeinu hu ladun et hakol lekav zchut. We know Rabbi Nachman's basic principle. You know, he said, Rabbi Nachman said that the Torah of Azamra, the one we just mentioned before about judging people favorably and looking at them, looking at the good points, is a Torah that you have to walk with your whole life. That's what Rabbi Nachman said. I mean, that's a teaching. It's not just like, hmm, sometimes I'll feel like that and sometimes not. The Torah of judging favorably, of finding the good points, is a Torah that you have to be with all the time. Second to bottom line, Halikutei Maran va Halikutei Alachas, both Rabbi Nachman's work and Rabbi Nassim's work, מלאים בלימודי זכות בכל מיני אופנים על כל איש מישראל. They are filled with always finding merit, finding זכות in all different sorts of ways. On anyone from Am Yisrael, יהיה, next page, יהיה באיזה מצב שיהיה, no matter where they're holding. ועלינו ללמוד לעצמנו את הדרך הזאת ולהתפלל בה תמיד. 
we must learn for ourselves this way and to always, always walk with it. Lit palel al kach, to always daven over this, over this Torah. Velishof, and to aspire, lichyot in la algasha azot, to aspire living a life that I live with this feeling as part of my being, that I'm a person, ladunet kol haolam lishchut, I'm a person who judges favorably, it becomes my nature. I, I was talking to a friend before, and he said to me, he said to me, um, he was reading someone's letter, and he thought that the person's letter was uh, very nice and, and inspiring, but why did he have to use a certain word in his letter? He thought, he thought it was a mistake. So I told the person, let's do an exercise. My mission's happened like an hour ago. I said, you're up for it? I said, yeah. I told him, rewrite your last text to me without using an ounce of subconscious or conscious judgment about someone else's choice of words. And um, here we can go out of the text right now. And that's exactly what we did. <laughs> and he was able to rewrite the sentence. He took out that one comment. And how do you know that then you judge someone favorably? Because if it's something you're willing to show someone else, that means you probably probably judge the person favorably. If it's a text message, you probably wouldn't show somebody else, even if it's not clearly the wrong thing. You don't want that. You don't want that. Rabbi Levi Yitzchok said about this teaching is that there are certain teachings that you can get away with with not making a tefillah out of it. There are certain teachings you just can't get away with it. There's no way for a person to become someone who naturally judges favorably, who becomes a person who wipes and abolishes out hatred from the heart, unless you dive in over it. Sometimes we read Torahs and we say, ah, this is really good for those who are born with a natural tendency to judge people favorably. But the Torah is not a Torah of principles and statements, each in accordance for, if you're like this, then this is for you. And if you're like this, this is for you. When the Torah lets us know about a mitzvah, when, we, when Hashem shares a mitzvah with us, it's not saying, it's not like hanging in front of you, know, showing us, hey, look what you're not, look what you're not. That's, God's not cruel. When the Rebona Shleilam tells us a mitzvah, he's like, look who you could be, I believe in you. The Blevi Yitzchak's telling us, wouldn't it be so much freeing, more freeing, what a life it would be if the Avera of hating someone in your heart would stop consuming all the place that it does in you because it's constant. It's again and again and again and again. Rebona Shleilam, please reveal to us, please make it clear to us that by hating someone, it's infinitely worse than most of Averas that we would perceive as horrible. We want to be so sensitive to it. We want to be so in tune with the damage that it does and the gifts that it creates when that, when that area is cleansed, when that area is cleaned up. Baruch Hashem, we have many great teachers that have shown us that these levels are attainable, they're possible, and even if it seems so far-fetched and so hard, like my dear friend, Dr. Clifford Bachner, always says, when you substitute the word hard with worthwhile, everything changes. Is it hard? Brutal. It's brutal to rip out hatred from the heart, especially when it's completely legitimate, or to a certain extent, it's legitimate b'chulay. But is it worthwhile? It's everything in the world. So I give us a bracha to believe how Rabbi Nachman says that when you have a thought of merit on someone, whether they, they know it or not, and it's sincere, please remember, it's not just that you have a nicer resume in Shemayim, but you literally never know if that's opening up the gate for someone else to find their way back home. You know what, forget about doing this to other people. 
Let's think about ourselves right now. How many moments do we have of being awakened and, and get excited and be like, oh, I got to do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go come and come close to you. What do you think? That just came from you? According to Rabbi Nachman, it's that someone had a deep thought about you. Someone judged you favorably. Someone looked at you with good nikuda, with a good point. So this whole concept now called pay it forward, pay it forward. Let's take that. It's happened to us. Listen, if, you, if we're here tonight learning Torah on a Monday night in the summer and not, you know, binging right now on Netflix, I don't know about it, an hour from now, but at least not now, right? Then maybe that's because someone must, not maybe, according to the teaching we just learned, someone thought good about us. Someone had an akuda tova about us. Let's pay it forward. Let's go to the places that are the hardest in the world to go to. And in the schus of the tzaddik, Rabbi Nachman, and the schus of the tzaddik, one of his great students, Rabbi Yitzchak Bender, who I can't wait to share with you shortly in the next few weeks what we have planned for Elul, because he's going to be a big part of it. The gates of schus should open for all of Am Yisrael, and we should all take advantage of it now and not wait for Elul to get our acts together with tshuva, but jump into the sea of tshuva even right now, tonight's a good night. Chav Be'ez Tamas, perfect time. Perfect, perfect time. Baruch Hashem, we're still learning, we'll continue strong. And Yemala Hashem, kol mishalos libeinu letova. Thank you so much for being with us, Chavra.